Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 5 of Goddamn GameCube. If you like our show, please leave us a rating on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you, and enjoy today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Goddamn GameCube. Greg and Riley are your hosts today. Nick the Intern is with us as well. And I think it's a happy day in the studio. Uh, we're talking about Paper Mario N64. Um, so let's do this. I mean, this is widely regarded as one of the best N64 games, arguably the best RPG on the console. There were only like four of them, but uh, it is a very well regarded game. So let's get into it. Yes, sir. So uh, we are following up from the last episode about Super Mario RPG, which was recently re-released. Um, this is sort of a spiritual successor, I would say, to that. Uh, it is another turn-based RPG in the Mario universe, uh, developed by Intelligent Systems this time. Uh, the boys are, are fist pumping in the, the studio. The boys, right. Intelligent Systems. Big uh, love for Intelligent Systems. Maybe not as much in recent years, but definitely have a lot of love for of this Of this developer. era of yeah. when Paper Mario came out, big love. Big love for what, them. What else did they have uh, cooking during this era? Well, this was what? Fire Emblem 567 is right yeah. this time? Yeah, they're the, they're the developers of Fire Emblem. For those who don't know, big Fire Emblem fans on this show. In the early, like when this game came out, then up to the 2000s, they're working on all probably the best games in that series. Right in the golden era. That's right, yeah. correct. Right. Right. So this this was yeah released uh, in 2000 in Japan and uh, 2001 internationally. Was this the last N64 game? I think it was probably pretty close. 2001 seems pretty late in the N64's yes. life. I should have looked that up. I am yeah. actually going to throw that out there. If a fan can correct me, do it. I think I'm right. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, well, it's interesting that this is this is late in the N64's cycle either way, and and the next one is late in the GameCube cycle. So it's, yep. we're towards the end of of that, but. Um, yeah, so what is what is your guys' history with this game, and why are we covering it? I can answer this, actually. Nick, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. I believe I got Paper Mario for my eighth birthday, mm -hmm. um, and we played this. What's funny is our friend of uh, on the show, Baber, he's never been on the show, our childhood friend Baber actually played this with us for the first two hours, mm -hmm. and so he had, uh, he had... I very fondly remember like my eighth birthday and us three playing this. I do, too. I remember that. Whether yeah. it was eighth or not, I can't confirm but we were definitely very young yeah but, we, but when we were getting this game on release could be my ninth birthday yeah. is one of or those. very close to release yeah. anyway but yeah i have very fond memories of playing this game as a kid correct nice yeah i remember seeing stuff about it in like nintendo power and stuff yeah. at the time mm -hmm. you know just not really getting what it was I, I think it makes the most sense to talk about the art style first sure yeah um, let's do it. it's a big big part of it um, what do you what do you guys think about it? I'm gonna throw out this idea. I think this is the only N64 game with an art style. <laughs> uh, by that I mean every N64 game is. It looks like there's a coat of Vaseline on the screen, yep. and all the characters look like triangles. <laughs> yeah, right? or there's a yeah. lot of like very sharp. Uh, like edges mm -hmm. i feel like this paper mario game i think it is the only n64 game where an attempt was made to not make that to yeah. not make the typical n64 style uh, that i'm aware of for sure or i let me say um, this i'll put it to you a little more artistically it, it would try to do that this is a hand-drawn kind of mm -hmm. thing and yeah i think it's the only game on the console that looks like this do you agree yeah. i absolutely agree with you greg i think even from the character the design of all the characters the colors in the environment you know, you could have told me this was on a different console. I might have believed you and not an N and not an N64 game. I yeah. think it looks great. And I think the graphics still hold up to this day. I am. Um, what I was going to say was like, when I think of N64, actually, I'll put out another big statement. A lot mm. of them right on th off the bat for this episode. I think this is the best looking game on the console. You know, I was thinking that. It's held up the best for sure. Yeah. Well, I was. if you think about this, what were quote unquote photorealistic games on the N64? It's both Zeldas. Yeah. Because those are kind of the graphics kings. Yeah. Of, and this game is the only one where a developer attempted to not make it look like that. Yeah. And it uses what I, my favorite part of like games graphics is not the games that try to go the highest budget and get the best looking graphics they can. It's the ones that have a style. Yeah, and that's Paper what Mario I, is so stylish. I think I intro half sarcastically. I yeah. introed this with it's the only game on the N sixty four with an art style. Yeah, well, the, all, all of them look the same. Well, what I was going to say too is that especially during this year, I mean, now everything kind of looks. It's it's. I think we've we've, we've kind of reached the diminishing returns point of graphics, mm -hmm. sure, um, where a lot of things are are they look as good as they can. Yeah, uh, in the indie sphere, there's a lot more experimentation, but mm -hmm. back then. 
it was very much like the graphics right like who's got the best looking graphics like etc and the only times that i remember people zagging was like this and wind waker where it was like sure like mm-hmm. like we're going to commit to something that is very specific within our grasp and it, it has held up to this well day. i also think what was very unique about how this game is presented is they do the cute it's 3d and 2d at the same time because mario is quote unquote paper thin right right yep. and they play on that well uh, sometimes that's, that's another point that i was going to make is that um, I think it's cool that, you know, uh, Mario 64 had come out and, and we had been introduced to him in, in uh, three dimensions. Yeah. Um, and then this is kind of it's, you know, you kind of lose something when you when you do that. Like it's 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 complete. I mean, it's completely different type of game than than 2D Mario's. Yes. And this you're kind of bringing that back reinventing it and like like not in a, a regressive way yep. like it's it's still pushing it forward sure um i think it looks great imagine talking very positively about graphics from an intelligent systems game we haven't done that ever <laughs> well i mean if we're gonna if we want to make that argument yeah. we're gonna go back to the time when n64 was the graphics king that's like true nintendo, nintendo was the graphics whoa, king well, like, yeah, crazy. like can you think about that at one point in time nintendo was the king of fidelity yeah. it was right. actually this yeah yeah like and this is kind of this is probably one of the last times yeah no, no, you're totally I right. So, and yep. what I, I didn't know about it also that I really like is how, um, when you're traversing uh, the world, it it opens up like an advent calendar, like it, mm-hmm. the paper folds, yes. in and of itself, and everything. Uh, it looks incredible. It really um, does. I love all those animations. Uh, I did want to mention some critics at the time thought they didn't do enough with the paper aesthetic in this one. Interesting. I mean, I would say there's definitely plenty of paper, but that's just me. I would say in this game, I don't want to make too many grand statements. In this game, they do the paper aesthetic as in, hey, look how cute the graphics are. They don't do a lot of Mario is made of paper in the world. It's literally made of paper. They don't do yeah. they do it more in the follow-up to yes. this. They don't really do it in this one. It's more like a look at this cool graphic idea we had. What do you like that? better or what do you think uh, well, i don't want to get too far ahead of myself but i think some of the paper aspects of the later games is actually a deterrent and it's annoying okay i actually like how this game looks like a storybook like mm. an advent calendar right. and that's all they do with it yeah and i i i like how they didn't hammer, hammer it home it just is what it is i'm gonna agree with greg here because i think if they went too much on the paper in this game it might have been annoying but i think the the just they had just the right amount for me where I can tell yeah this game is Paper Mario it's got this cute art style looks like a storybook but it's not so in my face that it annoys me well what I'm gonna say is if I were to top this off it's not in the gameplay right it, yeah. it's like oh when Mario falls off a cliff he floats like a piece of paper yeah. my hand is kind of floating yeah. down and down yeah I mean I think it's cute I think it's fine yeah. yeah I have no problem with it no it's I just thought it was interesting they they remarked upon that at the time and I, mm. I think. That's that's the big takeaway is that there's no confusing this for any other Mario game that had come out at that time. That's for sure. You know? Yep. Um, so do you? All right. Let's talk about uh, a little bit of a bone of contention for me. What do you? What do we think of the sound of this game? I think this. I think the soundtrack of this game is awesome. I okay. For me, I don't think any of the environments have any worthwhile sound, but I think the boss music is iconic. The boss music well, is good. I'll yeah. say this too. There are probably two songs that are annoying, mm-hmm. which is the overworld theme. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. It's so yeah. annoying. Yeah. And also like the battle song never changes, yeah. except yeah. in boss battles. It's annoying. Right. But I'll say this though. Some of the boss themes are some of my favorite shit ever. I think some the boss of, theme is kind of rip. I l- do like Tubba Blubba. I sing it all the time. I've had the fifth Can boss Can you do it right music. now? Uh, you mean the bum, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Swingers. Oh like yeah, swing, you know, yeah. A bit that of shit rocks and stuff like that. So, so Riley, I'm getting the feeling here that maybe you were not the biggest fan of this game soundtrack. Go ahead. Mm, no, no, and I don't yeah. have many specific complaints, but it's that's the thing is that the the boss themes were great, yeah. but the majority of what you're hearing in this game is is very drab. I think. Really, I, mean, I would. I think I actually kind of agree with like that. Like the or, overworld and the battle theme. Like, yeah. that's my thing. I, I mentioned this in the last episode. My thing with turn-based RPGs is like the repetitiveness of some stuff is like grates on me after a mm-hmm. while. It's like I've I've experienced this. I don't need to experience it anymore. You know what I think a flaw of this game is? We're actually we're at, we're asking for too much. It's like we're going to say a lot of nice things. Yeah. yeah. It's actually Intelligent Systems has done this better 
Mm. You'll, Nick, you'll know what I'm talking about. Riley will have no idea. Okay. In several intelligence systems games, the generic battle theme changes yes, halfway through the game. That's true. You don't get the same one all the time. That's true. Ready? Fire Emblem. When you attack, it's different. When mm -hmm. the enemy attacks you, it's different. Yeah. Right? Or in halfway through the GameCube game, the battle theme is completely different. Yeah. So you, so it's it, it, as soon as you get tired of it, you get a new one. But in this game, it's you get the same thing over and over. It and definitely over. could have used a second battle theme a second halfway one. through the game or something. Yeah, or, or one based on what area you're and in. I'm, I'm like, cool. I'm not asking for the moon here. I, I just like play the in, in Thousand Year Door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> play the play the normal Mario themes, and I'll be a happy camper. You know, yeah. like that's it. But that, that I just figured that was worth mentioning. That's actually wait, Riley. That's a great point you brought up. Do we hear? Remixes of all the classic Mario themes in this game? Only the pipe Only when you when you warp pipes. Somewhere. Okay. They, they do more of it than actually. Interesting. One. So it's really all original music and not going off all of original. standard Mario stuff. I do I, I feel like my entire I feel like I have a positive view on the sound of this game just because I think the Tubba Blubba theme is so good. <laughs> <laughs> like it's great. That's like that's like me. I think about like, oh, I love that album, and it's like it's really just two or three songs. Yeah, you know? like yeah. it's one of those things. But I mean, hey, you know what though? I think after the replay. I don't know why, but I love the first boss's music. Yeah. I think it's so upbeat and fun and yeah. so great for a first boss. It works so well for me. But anyways. Uh, yeah, there's definitely stuff to like. It was just like the, the you know, the stuff you experience most commonly was was kind of grating on me. Yeah. Um, it was of its time. Yeah. Uh, so getting into the, like how it plays, mm -hmm. I mean, how do we feel about the like the game's math this time? Okay, I'm going to say, I actually have a lot to say about this. You guys can interject at any time. Mm -hmm. I like their idea for this game. It just doesn't work out as well as you'd think it would. Ready? It's what I mean is they've really limited themselves to you can attack twice mm -hmm. and the enemy attacks for how many enemies are on the screen. And it you, really limits the variation on what can happen. So I'll put it to you this way. Like, um... Where, okay, Mario can attack, your party member can attack, then the enemies go. So there isn't a lot of point to using status ailments against enemies or having your party member not attack because you might as well just do damage. Yeah, that's, I think, um, I think it's a common criticism of this game too. It's a, one of my common criticisms as well is that status effects on regular enemy encounters typically aren't worth it. Well, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because yeah. we'll talk about party members and stuff. Mm -hmm. There are some party members who can upgrade Mario's attack power, but there's no reason to do it because mm -hmm. you might as well go do five damage to somebody. Why am I upgrading Mario's damage by one? Sure. You yeah. might as well just hit somebody. Yeah. And it's because you're limited to two attacks. Mm -hmm. You might as well. Yeah. It's so... I, Riley, do you want to stick just to combat? I've got other math problems with this game. Um, I'd like to say a brief word about sure. that, if it's okay. I did appreciate that the we we talked about how handholdy Super Mario RPG was. I did appreciate that this one you are very vulnerable, uh, especially at the start. Well, I, I'll say a couple of things about that. I don't disagree with you. Oh, I'm going to give a positive first. Mm -hmm. I love how the numbers in this game are all small. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like how like in Final Fantasy, you're doing 9,000 damage to people. It yeah. doesn't make sense to my brain. Yeah. I like in Paper Mario, you, you start- simplify the fraction. Yes. Right. Yeah. You start by doing one yeah. and then you do- Two. And someone um, doing 10 damage to you is like is huge. Whoa, it's like, devastating. Yeah, 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 like doing six to 10 is like huge. It's huge. Right. I like small number games like that. I think yeah. it's cool. Yeah, I agree. And they made it work really well. Well, I, I want to say the one, I don't disagree with Riley 100%. If I were to critique this game, yeah. the the numbers are too small to start. You're doing yeah. one damage to enemies and they're doing one damage back to you. For like and the first you, two hours. And you don't uh, get the ability to action command until like an hour or two into the game. Yeah. So you're doing, you're exchanging ones for hours. It's quite a slog <laughs> in the it's boring. It's a slog. It's quite a slog in the beginning, I But say. after <laughs> it opens up, I, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it didn't like, bother me except i I, th I thought a lot of moments it was kind of the, the the tuning of of sort of not only the pacing of of combat but the overall like like my how i feel my characters were progressing was was kind of slower than i expected yeah, it's slow did you oh was i was bad? gonna say um before, can i say one thing about combat that yeah. actually very very annoyed me much more on my recent playthrough than it has in the past i think um enemies are the lower level enemies are quite annoying yeah. yeah. because with the damage system in place, it's still going to take you a couple of turns to take them out and they'll give you really no experience for doing so, but they will keep attacking you on the world map. 
and in areas. Yeah. And I think, okay, that's kind of irritating. Running away, you lose coins even against low levels. They Not my favorite. They remedy this in Thousand Year Door, but if you ask mm. me, enemies should never give you zero experience points. This happens yeah. in this game a lot. Yeah. I thought that If you're was, over-leveled, they would give you zero. Yeah. That's right. kind of grating, honestly. And it's, it's, I mean, when you get into the, like, yeah, you, you do make progress where you get new moves and stuff and, and um, you, you utilize your party members a lot more, but there's like late game moments where like bosses are casting spells to heal like 20 HP at a time. Yeah. And it's like, damn, I wish I could do that. Yeah, you know yeah, what sure. I mean? And like, they'll, they'll be interrupting, like they'll attack in, but like one and a half times in between your attacks. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just, it doesn't feel, especially when you, you were talking earlier about, you can only have two people out Mario and one other party member at a time. And the enemy can have like four or five it's depending max. on who's on the screen right how many people they have on the screen and it's 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 just it felt very kind of lopsided during those larger encounters specifically now do you um riley because i don't want to get too far ahead of you i do want to talk a little bit about how about like badge balancing and party member abilities and stuff but i want you to kind of take control of the flow here i could go into that stuff whenever you want um i just wanted to talk i mean i just felt like especially after super mario rpg that i definitely preferred three people um well you're actually reinforcing one of my points where when you can only have two people on the screen your your strategy is very limited you're and you're just kind of watching yourself get hosed or like <laughs> trying to get the the action command in you know yep. and it's it feels very I don't know. Um, Exchanging tit for passive. tat. Right? Yeah, passive. Yeah. yeah. You know, to me, when it comes to turn-based RPGs, and Riley, you're talking about it, maybe sort of the unfairness of it, it seems lopsided. I'm kind of used to that. A lot of turn-based RPGs do that. Yeah. Where, where they try to put it against you and make it a little unfair. And trust me, Riley, when I played one of my first turn-based RPGs, when I saw the final boss cast Kiraga on himself, I was so mad. Yeah. So I totally feel you. No, yeah. yeah I, I don't mean like in terms of fairness necessarily, yeah. more in terms of like that. Yeah, that applies to to casting healing spells and stuff. But like when it it's basically just playing the game where I like I, I wanna be making decisions you know i want to i don't want to be watching myself get well fucked. if you think about like <laughs> yeah well if you think about like probability and what how many variations or outcomes could there be it it, it expands upon itself a ton when you have three or four people at once yeah. when yeah. you only have two there's only so much you can do it's right like mario attack and that's kind of and it. it's yeah. very um limited in terms of uh you you, you can, like you expend a turn doing the any action right yeah like sure. so if you if you want to switch out your party members, like that's a turn, yeah. right? Not always. Not always. Yeah. Not always. <laughs> um, the uh, there there is just a lot of situations where I didn't know what I was getting into, and it's like shit. Yeah. I wish I had brought somebody different so I could use my first move differently. Sure, you know? sure. Well, I also I do think there's a positive continuation from uh, Super Mario RPG where you mm -hmm. share magic points with your party member. Yes, that's that's flower points. I think that's cool. I don't like that you're that mario is the only one with health though yeah sure sure I sure that, that is remedied in later games I, it, it is. I, yeah i thought that was weird and kind of strange in this one yeah. um same same word um but uh yeah i just I, it, it felt a little imbalanced to me i did like actually when you're you're choosing what you want to do in this one um the projector I thought yeah that was a cool way isn't to mario's it? also thinking about it too yeah. Yes. yeah he has like the hand on the chin yeah very, very tasteful stuff um do you guys like the uh the star system do you mean like the summon meter yeah like focus and that kind of thing yes so i think for me like another critique i have of this game is that the item management system is a mess yeah <laughs> but i actually think it's a really creative way to not like pound mushrooms and minor healing items if you can balance how many times am i going to focus or is it called prey what is it when you focus yeah i believe it's focus yeah. how many times are you going to use focus so you can auto regen like um health and flower points instead of using items and can you use random battles to your advantage to charge that meter yeah. you can really kind of i don't want to say game that system but you can kind of strategize that way you totally can i think for me too uh especially this time around i took advantage of a lot of those moves a lot more than i usually do yes now you two please correct me if i'm wrong or someone in the comments here i thought this was very odd there's one move that you get called chill out yes it works every single time on every single boss so oh. you can lower any encounter 
any enemy, any boss by, I believe it's two attack points oh. and it works 100% of the time. I can't how, how verify does that. does it cost? Uh, Is it two, two or three? Two, yeah, I think. Two. So I'm just like, wait, I, I, it never failed the entire game when I used it. So I'm not sure if I just got super lucky. Maybe. Maybe it just never fails. I don't know. Well, it's all, I, Nick, it's also one of these things, though. I'm not saying you're wrong, yeah. but like, would you rather lower their attack power by two or go jump on someone for 10? I guess over like, time, the minus two attack power might be useful. Yeah. But either way, I'm saying like, I had a lot of fun using yeah. the summons more in this game. I think, um, you know, using the uh, the focus system to really like, sure. to, to recover during combat. I think it's kind of cool. It's a pretty innovative so. way to use a summoning system. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you my thoughts here. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like that it adds another um, angle yeah. to it, you know, yeah. where it's, you know, for attacking versus uh, item use. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of things you can do. It's nice that they have this other economy going where you can utilize it yep. however you want. Um, and I like that it becomes more useful over the course of the game because your meter gets larger and you yep. get more moves. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and they are, I think, generally kind of more useful the more you get. Um, what I don't like is that the focus is kind of, it's a really a crapshoot if I want to like spend a turn on that Yes, because it doesn't fill a full meter. Is there a badge where your party member can use focus? Yes. yes. I believe there is. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, that, that was the one thing where I'm like, I just, it, the balancing wasn't quite right for it's, me. Yeah. I, I just feel like we're going back to my original point of when you can only do two things, mm -hmm. you get limited yeah. about and in a good in a good way it's challenging but in a bad way you're just passively just being annoyed that mm -hmm. there's so little you can do yeah um no it's so um you you mentioned you had some thoughts on the badges so i am going to put this critique out in the world mm -hmm. so i did not do any like reddit deep diving yeah. on like what are ideal setups for mario i didn't do a lot of that now because i've beaten this game probably five or six times in my life mm -hmm. most recently about a month ago before we covered this i have a string i have a critique of this i don't know if you guys agree yeah. in my opinion you, the maximum badge points is 30. Mm -hmm. You're probably not going to get 30. You, I got 24. Uh, but like I, I had my Mario at 50, 50, and 24. So mm -hmm. 50 HP, 50 FP, 24 badge points. The best badges take between three and six badge points. Yeah. So you're never going to change them because there are so few you can put on at a time. Yeah. Example, I'm going to do attack plus one, defense plus one, zap, tap. Essentially, six, six, three, three, I'm, and I'm essentially done. Because then you, you have to also keep in mind your hammer and jump abilities also take badge points. Yeah. So I found in the game, I'm never changing them where there isn't, you don't get enough maximum badge points to really change Mario's play style to fit the situation. You're almost always going to run the same thing in yeah. every situation. I kind of agree there. Maybe I'm not, at, I'm not quite agreeing a hundred percent with you, but I do agree in a sense. There's some badges you're never going to take off. Yeah. Like for example, the quick change badge for party members, you're never going to take that off. Yeah. You're, um, you're never going to take power plus off. There's, there's what? 10 points right there. Um, for this playthrough that I did, I purposely went all in on badge points. I think at one point I, yeah. I had like 20 HP, 20 FP, but 30 badge points. Risky. Just to, just to mess around with badges. Just to feel something. Yeah, you know what? Because I think you get a lot of cool special moves too. Things like power bounce, things like hammer throw. And that's very useful to me. Well, I guess I'm going to make uh, two points on this. Yeah. There's something about the badge balancing system that bothers me. Yeah. Why is HP plus and FP plus an option? I'm going to explain this. Yeah. Raise if you choose when you level up, you can choose either five HP, five FP, or badge points. Yep. If you choose badge points, you get three, and, and there is a badge that will raise your HP by five if you it, and it takes three badge points. Why would you ever use it? Because you might as well have just raised HP. To me, it's a, more of a situational thing. Like when you have thirty badge points and nothing else, you can kind of swap out badges as you need to. But you're never going but to. Maybe if you need five FP in one area, you'll throw it well, on. Generally, at the end of the game, though, you're not going to use. You're those not badges. going to. Those aren't. I mean, those aren't the only things that you can use badge points for. It's just very helpful if you have the extra slots to add on to your health or mana pool can i like um what i'm gonna say is they remedy this a little bit in thousand year door yep. where um if you ask me if i had it my way if this it's a very good game like yeah. uh, if i had it my way your combat abilities should not have been tied to badge points those should have been something else and they do that in thousand year door where I think all badge points should have been passive Mario upgrades. Eight, you know, whether it's HP, MP, defense, attack, quick change, double dip. It, sh it should not have been like 
things in shouldn't have been magical powers in combat those should yeah. be something else i yeah. do i do agree with that i do like the fact that badges are, sort of work as a traditional rpg's armor yeah sort of in a way it's like equipment it's like you're you know you're putting on a helmet putting on a chest piece something like that it's kind of the equivalent there i mean they kind of yeah. they kind of function similarly to like the rings and dark souls that's true yep know? like well, accessories i'll say this too i think but we're getting into the well ton of details about badges i'm sure there's an ideal setup oh absolutely. i don't care that much yeah but I think like the point I'm trying to make is the maximum is not high enough mm -mm. for the amount of points a badge takes. So you're only going to wear four or five the whole game. Yeah, they. I think the badge point limit should have been a little bit higher, higher than 30. Or the but, requirements should have been lower yeah. so you can actually wear a bunch at once. Yeah. I just felt like, yeah, I'm not saying there isn't enough variation or there isn't different things you can do, but the amount of things you can do at once is small. Yeah, I would say overall, I like the badge system. It's yeah. definitely improved in the sequel. Sure. Like, yeah. But I think it's okay for what it is. I wouldn't say it's anything groundbreaking. And I think that's what Riley cool. was saying, though. I just yeah. don't think the math doesn't quite work in this game yeah. in, in various ways. Not that it's bad. There's just certain... I'm playing this as a 31 year old. Like there is, right. I see the flaws in the math when yeah. I'm nine. It's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what, what I think um, is it, so interesting, though, is that I it came flooding back to me that is the badge system in Hollow Knight and you you yeah. and I had the the same critique where mm -hmm. they they don't let you mess around with it too much. They don't give you many slots in that game either. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. pretty funny that's the same problem. Interesting. But, yeah. Um I did want to say that when you're leveling up, you know, no matter if disregarding like the BP we just talked about, I did think it was much more valid like oh, I want to upgrade health or FP. Sure. Um, than Super Mario RPG, where I'm just going to buff health. You know I, I, I totally mean? agree with you. I but keep in mind, in Super Mario RPG, good. I didn't do that. I min-maxed everybody. Right. <laughs> I Nobody got an HP upgrade from me the whole game. It was all your attack, your defense, your magic. That's right. Jeez. I min-maxed everyone. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, okay. Well, so in my opinion, I think that the level up options are a little bit better. I like it better. I like it better. I just don't like that there is an HP plus badge. Yeah. Because sure. why yeah. would you ever use it? Yeah, that's fair. You yeah. might as well have just raised HP permanently. Yeah. And yeah. go strategize better, you idiot. <laughs> like, I don't know. I guess I if it's it. like, if you're struggling with a boss and you want to play around with a badge, it's like, oh, I have this one. Maybe I'll try adding five points. Or sure. I'll say this. If you can't beat a boss or you're struggling and now you've seen all the bosses moves, you're going to take away your hammer and jump abilities you're not going to use. And yeah. perhaps you'll raise your HP or something. Right. It's but a situational like, badge. But like, I can't really go all in on that because like, to me, how you experience the game is the first time. Like yeah. your first time through something, your first experience. So like, if you've played it a million times, it doesn't really, it doesn't count. It, it doesn't really hold remedied. water for me. Yeah. It may be remedied if the badge point limit was higher. Like if you either, would have 60. Either way, badge point limit higher or, or each badge is lower. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, how do you guys feel? So we, we talked about this a little mm -hmm. bit in the previous one. How do you guys feel about the action commands in this game? I actually like them a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, I don't love how any how some of them are mash this button. Yeah. It's never my favorite. That's kind of an antiquated thing of, of that era. Mm -hmm. But I think there are enough variations. Either push the stick a bunch of times, mash an A button, time it up. I think there are plenty of them. I don't know how you feel. I tend to agree where I think there is enough variation where... Oh, I don't really like this move because it requires me to mash A, but there's a similar move where I get similar damage that has a different action command, so I can use that instead. I think they could have balanced it a bit better yeah. where maybe the harder action command is better damage, but you're just going to use one that's less annoying with the same result. I will say, though, I f really felt like my left stick was going to break oh, <laughs> while yeah. playing this game. I, oh, dude, absolutely. <laughs> I'm pounding that thing. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. I I. I'm not sure if it was just the the way I was playing this game, but the responsiveness seemed kind of spotty, um, especially in this game where... Can I ask you, did you play through Preservation? I did. Did you play it originally? I played through Preservation with an Xbox controller. Same. Okay. So I don't Seemed know. okay to me. Yeah, I, and my understanding of it was was muddied a little bit because there's a badge that says it makes them succeed more often. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I think that's the defense one, right? It, it says it or makes it, it succeed more often. I think that actually increases your window. Yes. That's what I was thinking, but it didn't really explain I it. I took it off. So I did look up this particular badge nice. online because I was curious. There's a little bit of debate other to when it, where if it actually works and yeah. if it's actually worth keeping on. So I think I think your, cons your opinion here is pretty valid where it may not be the most useful thing. It may not help that much. It's one of those things where I, I'm just... 
this this is definitely an old man thing. Yeah, but, but mm-hmm. you'll get there one day, kids. Um, <laughs> I, where I was doing all these things, especially during like the fart boss, you know, like in the um the flower world. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> the, fart. You have the big fart cloud. The fart I you know was, there's a lot of mashing in that one, mm-hmm. and I like I woke up the next day. I had to go to work, and my fucking wrist hurt. And I was just like, <laughs> why? Why? I, why is am I feeling pain after for playing a? Fucking I've got a video? great console you know, for you. It's called the Wii. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've already seen me play something on that. Yeah, that was pretty. You fun. saw how that went, but Riley. I totally agree though. We we're playing this game and all these action mans. I'm like, oh man, my tendonitis is gonna flare up playing this thing. Well, this is. I'm why, surprised I don't have it yet. Yeah, right. This is why I think they should have remastered this one instead of the next one Mm -hmm. and then made it like an accessibility option, you know, like if you want to just hold it instead of, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's a product of its time. I'll be honest. What's everyone's favorite action command? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you it's hold left stick. Boop. Boop. Oh yeah. Yeah. The hammer one's the best. That's what everyone wants. The halo sound. Yeah. That's right. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So that's, that's, did you guys have anything else about combat? No. Okay. Um, I was going to say that the overworld is a lot better than Super Mario RPG. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I'd say mainly because it's all connected, but, um, I like the ability to take your partner around and explore old areas for bonus. You get a little bit of a Metroidvania in this game, which it's a big positive, uh, where you got a new party member. They can do a thing, go back to a thing you couldn't do. Mm -hmm. It's very effective in video games. Everyone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. (laughs) think about it yeah, yeah. It's, it's i actually think it's one of the strongest parts of this game it's what sets it apart from super mario rpg yeah. um not only are i think most of the pains in this game are kind of charming and i like them all mm-hmm. they all do something kind of interesting and when you have to do some of them in tandem it's interesting yeah i will say my only critique of that is the game as you go further along tends to forget about the early party members yeah like i don't feel like i was using cooper's out of combat ability that much in the late game you no. don't really use it that much mm-hmm. but um i think aside from that though the party members are all great and okay correct me if i'm wrong but the party members in pipe mario 64 uh in particular are they all enemies that mario has killed a whole lot of over his illustrious career yeah what which what, is very strange what about is it what who's what is a sparkly that's oh, an is enemy he? type. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I'm just like, wait, are all of your companions just enemies? Yeah, that's Which what is, I like about it. That's and really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I fuck- the, the miscreants. That's right. Yeah. The scum. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, no, I, I, I want to do a whole bit on the characters, mm-hmm. but um, I was just going to ask you guys about um, Toad Town. Mm-hmm. Uh, any, any highlights there? Anything you like in particular yes. about it? Mm-hmm. I like the whole thing. Um, so what I love about this game and not so much about the next Mm -hmm. one, which we will talk about in a later episode, what I really like about the overworld in general and Toad Town, it's kind of a hub, but Mm -hmm. I kind of like how you, I'm getting like very like Greg, like, uh, very like something Greg likes. Yeah. I, I really enjoy how you could see how, if you lived in Toad Town, how you get around. Example, if I take a left west out of Toad Town, I can go to Goomba Village if I go through the forest. Or if I take a right out of the forest, I can go to Koopa Village. Mm -hmm. Or if I take the train, I can go here. (laughs) Or if I want to go to Spooky Mansion, I go through Spooky Forest. Like All all the signs make sense. Right. I kind of like how everything's connected. And I do what I also really love. I love how like some of the houses are locked. And as you Mm -hmm. like slowly make your way through the game, you find yourself in these houses you couldn't get into. You unlock different characters. Their purposes are, are Yeah, the purpose, and almost every house has a purpose. I don't think the N64 bar has any purpose that's in there uh, near like the the co- near like the boating area there's like an n64 lounge oh, I, I think right? there's like a side quest there. there might be yeah um but I, I you know i like everything do what i think is really cute we'll talk about it when we talk about story i like how one of the houses actually becomes one of the levels which is the toy yeah. box mm-hmm. yeah that's great. i like the whole thing yeah i'm pretty much in agreement about toad town i think it's a really nice very yeah it's a very nice variation on toad town and like we've seen it a lot in mario but I like it a lot. I like what they do with this one. I do think as you get later on to the game, there is less to do. Yes. Um, and there's not as much to find. Um, and that's remedied a little bit in the next game. But, you know, but I think for the most part, I really like it. Do you know what's one thing I'm surprised they didn't do more with? And they don't do it in any of these games. Yeah. Uh, and remember, in my opinion, there are three of these games. There are not <laughs> six. Um, what, I, what I'm surprised at is they don't do anything with Luigi. You can go no. to Mario's house and you can talk to Luigi. I'm surprised he is not a secret party member. 
and you don't do anything well with it. i have a note that Go was ahead. originally going to be much later which was what do we think of this game's treatment of luigi they kind of do him dirty honestly i, I said that yeah. because <laughs> the the whole time i don't know because at this point in the canon uh luigi has been on several adventures with mario mm-hmm. and they really like i think it's kind of funny but they really make him seem like, oh, I, I can't wait to be good enough to like go out with you. I'm like, the, dude, these well, guys fucking. You're not wrong. I think it's a little auto. He's not a secret party member. Yeah, I thought like maybe like towards the end he was going to hop on. Right. right. I feel like their rationale is maybe if we make Luigi a party member, no one's ever going to use anybody else. Yeah, that might be why. <laughs> so he's just and I don't know what else he would do outside of combat maybe a bigger jump i don't know well but then again they made a whole handheld franchise that talks about this yeah you know what maybe they had that in the back in the wings and like just waiting like we're not gonna make luigi a party member we well, got this well whole if you RPG think about franchise. it about yeah. three months later he was the star of his own game which is luigi's mansion true uh, that's, that's anyway true. yeah i'm surprised they didn't do it enough with him they didn't do enough with mario's house in this game it's just kind of there that's yeah. the one part of toad town that's disconnected it's weird, right? Go through the pipe. There. Although yeah. I think that's canon with like every Mario. I mean, game. it makes yeah. sense. He's yeah. uh, he's moved on to the suburbs at this point. <laughs> he's doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, did you guys like? Did what do you think of the side quests? Did you mess around with those at all? So or? I'm not going to tell you they're good. I think it's interesting how you don't have a quest menu. There is no quest log, as far as yeah. I'm aware. And I. I'm not telling you they're good, yeah. but I think it is cute how you deliver letters mm-hmm. or you help the mayor of Koopa Town do really stupid stuff, but you get star pieces, which is drip, 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 mm-hmm. upgrade because you can get drip, drip, drip. If you turn in the star pieces, you get things. It's like there's enough there where if you want to do it, it's fine. I like how there's no actual quest menu. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of side quests, right? The only one that came to mind was the Paracarry delivering letters one, I'll, which yeah. I'll be honest, for me, I, I never kept track of that stuff. Whenever I was in Toe Town, I just brought out Paracarry on the on the off chance. Oh, I, I did them all. Someone. Yeah. You did all of them. I did all of them. Wow. Good for you. I, yeah, I thought it was interesting that initially I just thought he was an NPC, like just another like, oh, can you yeah. help me? with I drop my letters. Yeah. And then he becomes like a party member. Yeah. yeah. It was just cool. The one that I I just literally did a 180 on was the um when the old man I I did a favor for him in Koopa Town. Mm-hmm. You do a favor for him. And he's like, oh, and another thing. I'm like, nope, nah, that's it. <laughs> I'm all set. See you later. <laughs> I did all of them because I really wanted to get the attack plus badge early. Oh, is that the reward for it? Yes. Oh, there's a, there's a way to get another one. So I felt stupid for doing all the quests. You can get another one in the toy box. Well, you can get two of them. Yes. If, or maybe three of can them. You, you can stack three. them. Oh, yes. But there yes. aren't enough badge points because we've talked about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sore subject. Yeah. <laughs> um, last gameplay point. Mm-hmm. I wanted to mention that part of this game involves uh, Princess Peach. She's been... Uh, mm-hmm. She, she's been had again. Bowser has locked her up, and there's a couple moments where you play as her. And what do you guys think about these? So I have a lot to say about this game, apparently. Yes. Um, so I think the idea of it is cool. Yeah. I'm not saying I like playing it. Let me t- let me put an idea in your head. It's kind of like the Assassin's Creed office section yeah. of the game. You yeah. Know? Uh, where what I like about it is. I like how Peach actually has to do things. You don't just go and talk to someone and it ends. It's at the end of every chapter, yeah, by yeah. the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I like about it is it's kind of a stealth sequence where you have to get around guards because blah, 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 Peach gets captured. You have to sneak around guards and slowly get Mario information. You, you sneak out of your room like Desmond. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And what I think is cool, I don't know if you guys did this, you can find really high level items mm-hmm. in the castle and you can send, send them, them, send to, them to yeah. Mario via an item box. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like cool. Resident Evil. It's interesting. I yeah. like that about it. Yeah. I'm not saying that what you do is her is fun. Making the cake is so stupid. Okay, so that was the one part where I was like, I was getting mad because yes. I fucked it up twice. Oh, no. And I did because you have to make a cake for this really fat, like shy guy. Yes, yes. Right? right. And I, I, I screwed it up twice. I thought I followed the instructions perfectly. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Mm-hmm. You know. And that's like, I, I would just want to get back to RPG. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, because it's a mandatory. Yeah, segment. But I like a lot of the peach stuff, honestly. I mean, I think it's funny. You know what's kind of funny about it too? You actually do get a little bit of Greg quote, a little bit of drip drip with some upgrades to peach. You yes. do a little bit more. Oh, you with explore the, the sneaking. Uh, yeah, parasol. you get the parasol. You explore a little bit more. It becomes There's a little bit more free. Part. Yeah, and That's at one point, funny. if you want to like go collect the items, at one point, like you can walk around the castle a little bit more freely. Peach gets a little bit more to do as you progress through them. There's a little progression. Do you there. think they should have let you switch between them freely? 
wouldn't that be cool? We're like, okay, mm. you can run into a problem where let's say you run out of peach sections and you didn't send Mario anything. Oh. Wouldn't it be cool if you could play as her whenever you wanted, if you want to switch? Maybe after a certain point, you could switch. It would let you do it. That's yeah. interesting. Hmm. I never you like see what's up over there. Yeah. If you choose to. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Maybe you like go or, to the or observatory. It's, it's like um, Arkham City where you find like the, the swap points. Yeah. Sure. Like Catwoman. You yeah. That? Neat anyway. idea. I like it. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to get into the, the squad mates here. Yes. Let's oh, do yeah. it. The um, buddies. Your, your buddies here. How do you feel about the number of buddies that you accrue? In this I think game? it's just fine. Yeah. I think it's actually one too many. Personally, uh, one too you, many? Uh, you I could think be it's right. one too many. I think the last party member we is either it the fish we uh, uh, the, no, the see? cloud guy, the cloud guy. You forgot about. Oh him. my god! I, I always forget about that guy. My issue with him in particular is you get him too late. Yes. I think if he was acquired at the beginning of chapter six rather than the end, he would have been more useful. He has but a now, funny name. Yeah, Lackluster. Lackluster. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's how funny. I feel about him. Me too. He's a Lakitu. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. I just I don't know. I feel like he's my afterthought party member. But Wait, he's say a, that again. How did you pronounce that? Lakitu. I, I always say Lakitu. Oh, I did. How do you pronounce it? I've Lakitu? always said Lakitu. All right. Lakitu. Comment. Mm. Comment your pronunciation. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> I felt like it was the more Japanese. Uh, oh, yeah. You're yeah you're Nick, you know right. what? You kind of proved your own point because I forgot about that guy. Yeah. Like, well, I like him, uh, but I think he's just gotten too late to be useful. Yeah. yeah. It's it's tough because Mass Effect runs into a similar problem where mm -hmm. the later characters, like, they're awesome, but you don't get as much screen time with them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so. Let's look. I mean, maybe start with that guy. Like, sure. I did like how he has one of the most useful uh, overworld abilities, which is floating over. Stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's true. And he makes you move a little faster, too, I think. Yeah, he uh, yes. movement speed. That is true. I forgot about that. That's a pretty good move. If by the time you get him, you don't have to cross any overworlds anymore, right? Not yeah, really. That's true. Well, yeah, it's really just for going back into old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting, getting yeah. Uh, star pieces or whatever. But, um, no, I, I just figured we could we could run through them really quick yeah, of uh, you know yep. their their design, their character uh, development, and their uh, gameplay utility. Sure, right? sure. So I think we've covered that guy pretty much. Yep. The first the first guy you get is uh, Goombario. My guy. So, yeah. Let's talk about Goombario. So here's the thing: love that you have a Goomba with you because yeah. it really turns the little hat. Yeah, because yeah, he really right. turns Mario a Mario game on its head because those are the enemies. Yeah. He's not very useful, especially his non attack damaging moves. Not useful. So I'm going to counter that a little bit. Yeah. A li just slightly. He yeah. becomes maybe the second highest damage dealing partner. In theory, because you yeah. attack twice, because you bounce. Well, because he yeah. also gets multi bonk. Correct. Which is the same as Correct. Mario's power bounce. So in theory, I'm, you would stack I'm, a What lot I'm of saying damage. is if you don't hit the attack button, don't use him. Because like yeah. ready, there's there's no reason to use what is it examine study oh what, tattle right? tattle yeah. there's no reason <laughs> yeah. there's no reason to use it because you might no. as well just kill an enemy and you or you could if you really wanted it you could just put on the peekaboo badge. Can I give you cool. something else? Yeah. You could also use tattle and shut the game off, and then you would and know. restart it. Then yeah. you would know. <laughs> That's true. What do can I give you some? This is like if Greg could direct the game. Yeah. What if you had to tattle to find a weakness, or else you couldn't do it? This game is made for eight year olds. I know. Man. I'm <laughs> thinking here. I'm playing <laughs> I like chess the idea, here. But no, I, yeah, because I like that. Because I believe Mallow had that in the last one. He did. Yeah. Right. Yes, you're right. He did. Um. And so I like that idea where you where you um you use a party member to find out not only the weakness but um you also get their uh, HP readout yes. yeah. um mm -hmm. and you, you I believe you permanently it get permanently get yes. any any enemy that, that But is, you can undo it. it by turning the game off which yeah. I don't like or just wear peekaboo well, I, yeah. let me say this too. I got that. I there's a little bit of a one. missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. What if you had to use Goombario to find Tubba Blubba's weakness? You have to use cool. Tattle. That'd you kinda, don't. Yeah, you don't do that. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, do I think for the most part, though, I do like Goombario. I do think it's really funny how Mario is very down and out and who comes to his rescue, a Goomba, a Goomba who like idolizes him. It, Bro, I he's like killed it. a lot of your friends. Yeah, I know. And family, probably. <laughs> yeah. I, that's something I like about it is that yeah. it's, it's you know, they're not all they're not all bad guys. I, yeah. no, I like the character. I like him a lot. Yeah. He's a great first party member. Um, you know what, though? Can I say one thing? Yeah. Um, I do think it's cool how your Goomba party member will help you solve puzzles if you're stuck. Yes. Yes. I, yeah, that is cool. And I, it's cool that he, he talks about the areas that you mm -hmm. go to. A little lore. It's um, nice. You know what I was thinking about? I I feel like just a lot of enemies should should have just had health bars, and yes. then there's some that are hidden. Yeah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I, I I'm raised on Pokemon. Like, I'm yeah, used yeah, to yeah, that yeah, health yeah. Bar being no, there, I yeah. get that. Knowing how much have Tattle be necessary in right. certain situations. Yeah. Um. Uh. So Cooper. Oh, dude, I, I'm gonna go first. I love this guy. 
I don't think he's considered one of the better party members, but for me, I think he's one of my favorites. I'm going to tell you why. If you upgrade him early, like the first upgrade block you get, him using Power Shell and Mario using Quake Hammer can take out any group of enemies within like a chapter or two. It's just easy. Like Five turn. FP, done. One turn. Yeah. One turn. No, exactly. I think the the strategy in this game really yeah. comes down to how much damage can you do in one turn. Yeah. Um, and I think you're right. I did the same thing. Yeah. If you upgrade Cooper and you have Quake Hammer, yep. you can wipe out screens of four enemies and more more easily, and it's cool. You get the, the fire shell. And you get fire shell at the end, which is very well timed yeah. for yep. the ice area. Um, I don't know. I don't think if you were to I don't know official tier lists or anything, but he's probably doesn't rank that high. I don't know. I like using him. I think he's pretty fun. When it I comes to tier list, lot. people just multi bounce and just do it a hundred times in a row. Yeah, all right, that's yeah. fair. But I like Cooper a lot, yeah. and, and uh, his out of battle ability is cool too. They forget about it later on, which I, I mentioned. I find before, it because I mean it's it's virtually the same as as when Mario does it in a two D game where you yes. you jump on the shell. Yep. Um, and I, I find it very satisfying when you get to do that. Yeah. Um, it's really helpful actually to first strike enemies with yes. him. You can do it from a distance. Yes. You know what? He is one of the only party members who can do a first strike, True. which is really cool. Yep. Um, and uh, maybe while we're on the subject, I wanted to, to briefly mention that the, uh, the upgrades, the character upgrades, Yeah. it's one of those things like, um, it, it, it's kind of that same feeling when you find the weapon bench in Bioshock. Yeah. Um, where it's like, oh my, thank God I found one of these because yeah. mm -hmm. you hit those blocks. And you know what's they, funny? It's the same system too where there's two of them per weapon, two of them uh, per party member. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. And you, you get the orb at one point that lets you upgrade again. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, which which I liked a lot. Um, so let's get into uh, to Bombette here. All right. When I was younger, I was a big Bombette guy. She's definitely the party member where it's like, I don't want to think. I just want to blow stuff up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, if you want to go max damage nuke, just like, go just for it. Nuke. She's not the most efficient FP using party it member. It depends but what it is. Yeah. Like, if you need to go strategy and defense, don't do it. But if there's too many enemies on screen and you want to do eight or nine to the whole group, go fuck it. it. Right. Yeah. Although yeah. She, she unfortunately has the mash A action command, right? Which is tough, especially the... I had a tough time getting her last one down because of the the mashing. I don't know. I just couldn't quite get oh, it. I crushed it every time. No, 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 good for you. Yeah, I couldn't do it. My tendonitis is flaring up. <laughs> Can't do it. That was. <laughs> I'm you, too old. You said that very similarly to Kramer. <laughs> My tendonitis is flaring up, Jerry. <laughs> I can't hit the action commands. Um, I, yeah, I liked her. I liked her character. I think. Um, yeah, she's uh, cool. I, I, I liked. You know, you can. You get the blowing through walls. It's just odd that when she blows up, she's just like fine. Wait, can I bring up one stupid thing? Listen, the game's for kids and it's cute. Yeah, there's one stupid thing about this game. There's a lot. When you break them out of prison, it's because they blow up the wall. You, they could have just done it before you got there. She makes a joke about that. Does she? Yeah. yeah. She says, "Oh, I guess I could have done that earlier." Yeah, it's kind of cute. It's kind of funny. They just needed the motivation. You know what they yeah. should have said? They, they, I think they could have solved this easily if yeah. Mario has to pull the pin out of her or something sure. right. for her to blow she or like blow or, or like or just a light thing. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Riley, I want to get back to your point. It is very funny how NPC bombs in Paper Mario don't die when they blow up. Yeah, they just flip around. They just flip around. <laughs> I mean. At the end of the day, though, I like Bombette decently, but I think what really holds her back in combat, she can do nothing else other than blow up enemies. There's also some enemies that she can't yeah. get to. Yeah. Um, and so, it's, I, I, yeah. The, Coop's has, Cooper has the same problem, right? Yeah. And it's, really that, that's another uh, area where it would have been beneficial to have two party members out yes. at a time. I agree. Well, it's essentially Ocarina of Time bombs. You want to open up new areas? Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. the same thing. She's if, cool. Or if you want to clear out a screen of like, Bullshit. If you want to, I don't want to think about it. Let's just. If you want to nuke roll. somebody for nine or whatever, just yeah, do it. Just that's go for it. it. Yeah. Um, Para Carry. Let's talk about him. <sighs> Is it okay if I say my least favorite besides Lackluster? Really? Yeah, that's okay. I think he comes across too much like an NPC, mm -hmm. and I find his combat moves to be annoying. So I just don't use them, like air yeah. raid and all that stuff. I, I don't think he he put out enough damage. He. It, yeah, I, I agree. He is so... What's really interesting, he and other party members do the exact same thing and exact same damage in combat, but his action commands are a lot harder. Like, if you miss the one where you have to aim, you do nothing. Right. Yeah. But if you miss an action command with another party member, you'll at least do something. In some my damage. opinion, Paracarry has one use. When enemies are flying and also are spiky. Yeah. And if you need to just use air raid to do something to someone in the air. Yeah. That's I think, the only point. 
Uh, in this playthrough, I've never really used Paracarry. In either. this playthrough, I wanted to use him more to yeah. see if I could find a use for not him. Not really. He's just not that useful. Especially when someone like Watt can just go up to any enemy and hit through defense. Yeah, it's not. He's not that useful. I th I kind of like his character, though. Like He's a mailman, but he's not very good at it. Yeah. He keeps dropping letters. But it, like, And his, his ability is cool on paper yeah but um I, it's i found it kind of annoying to use when he carries you yeah you know what i it found the fast it was very slow and the gaps are like just far enough where if you have to be pretty close to the edge to make it over they couldn't have given you another inch right yeah, i've I said that on a couple episodes yeah not quite yeah it's it, this is another one where the perspective kind of hurt my enjoyment of like the platforming sections yeah, sure. like yeah. i was like i don't really I don't know. And is he the same guy who delivers mail to Mario in the beginning? Is that Paracarry yes. who does it? Okay, I'm pretty same sure. Guy. And in the second one too. Ah, nice. Um, Love it. Uh, okay, so let's get to uh, Lady Bo. Oh, this is the best party member in the game. I agree. By far. No. Best party member. Absolutely. I, I think she's the best. No, yeah, she's I don't. The best. I don't think so. Yeah. So I think it's cool how yeah. she has the ability to hide you. It's so overpowered. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. I think that's awesome. But yeah. I, what, this game, yeah. we made, we critique the balancing heavily. Yeah. They do do something cool. Yeah. Where if, because an enemy having a defense of one really fucks you yes. up. Yes. Yes. Where does. Ba yep. uh, Bo Bow. I think she, it's Bo because she wears a bow. Wears a bow. She, this is she, a she can use a boo who wears a bow. Right. She can only do one damage per slap. So technically, if an enemy has no defense and you want to slap someone for the yeah. most damage in the game, you can. Yeah. But if they have any defensive stats, she will do zero. Yeah, so I'll retract. I'm not going to retract my statement. I still think she's the best party member in the game. But the final couple of bosses happen to have defense and she's not very good against them. But well, you, everything else up until that point, she wrecks. Her being able to hide you fan, is cool. It's great though. The oh yeah, the fan smack. If they have if they have no defense, it's what eight damage. Yeah, it's a lot. Ten. Yeah. I think. Is it ten? Yeah, I think she, it's eight. And doing out of sight every other turn, you can pretty much avoid half of the damage in combat using that. You know, they, they nerfed it. They finally they give you. They finally like have a little strategy in it. Yeah. Where like if you want to hide Mario and give up a turn, mm -hmm. like you can do it, and to like to stop you from getting devastated by ten or twelve or higher. What I found, cool. uh, what I did with her a lot was uh, you know the the battle with the master. You can yeah. go to the dojo and yeah. do those fights. I was able to do a lot of the high level fights early by really messing with the combat system. If you have like the quick change badge on, okay, I'm going to use bow right now to hide myself. Next turn comes around. I'm going to switch to another party member, do some damage. The next turn, I'm going to switch to bow to hide myself again. You really only get attacked on half the turns. You it's would cool. Originally. Yeah. And for that, I tried not to use her that much because I felt she was way too overpowered. I think in the first half of the game, you're right. In the second half of the game, you have to use other people. Maybe if, the if you have second. enemies have defense, you have to change. Yes, you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I liked her character as well. Oh, and I do like the fact that using out of sight, that's the move like out of combat to hide from Tubba Blubba and the guards in his castle. Cool. I think it's pretty cool. Also hiding from traps and spikes and yes, stuff. Yes. I think that's cool. a pretty cool use of the move. Yeah. Overall, very good party member. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, what? Okay, mm -hmm. I don't think this is the coolest party member, and I also think they kind of phone it in. Mm -hmm. But I do; th it's the it, the interesting combat ability where yeah. he, he what is it? He, she, they? She, I believe she, yeah. they. I don't really know. Yeah, um, it's the, like what, can you describe this thing? Like it's a, just it's just a ball of electricity, right? right. Yeah. I believe she's referred to as she. You could but be right. I could be wrong. Um, yeah. I really love how she hits through defense. Yes, mm -hmm. it also. This is where the game's math starts to become not very well done, where yeah. you might as well do five damage with Watt because no one can block it. Yeah, that's my... Um, I don't know, because if an enemy has defense, you might as well use another party member because you'll do at least six. I also felt like but... the paralyzed move never worked. <laughs> oh, that's my, that's my big issue with Watt, aside from the damage, the, her normal attack, which is great, right? Because she floats. She can hit basically anything. Yeah. yeah. All of her other moves are kind of useless, in my I, opinion. I used paralysis and stuff on people and okay. sleep jump and that kind of stuff. Okay. I, I just, it, I did it and I did the action command and I felt like it frequently did nothing. Mm. The paralysis You have to move. crush, you have, I think you have yeah. to max it out for it to have a good percent chance to hit. Yeah. yeah. For me, I feel like on the bosses that have defense, Watt is invaluable, especially yeah. for the final boss where he has some defense mm. yeah then Watt is clearly the best party member for it mm -hmm. um the out of combat ability is kind of cool I you like can see too, hidden yeah. blocks i don't think it's utilized it's that a, much for it's a rooms, better but... version of what they tried to do in super mario rpg where like you have mm -hmm. like you can wear some badge or something that lets you that that 
uh, gives Shows you a notification when there's a hidden block. Mm-hmm. Gives you a notification, get pings you on your phone. It kind of yeah. pings you, but <laughs> yeah. with what if you you hold her out? Yes, it will show you a hidden block, and you can still jump and stuff. It doesn't really inhibit you by that much. By and you a have to use it a lot. There were several really? areas where I'm like, why can't I reach this jump? This is so oh, oh there's a hidden block. Yep. Yeah, right. yeah. Overall, I think Watt is a fantastic party member. Yes. She's my number two. Top I think. two. Yeah. Okay. Um. So last party member sushi, N- underused. Right. She. Yeah. She is only yeah. used in really the the jungle area and yeah. then not really anything I, else just to go yeah. back into old areas to swim yeah, yeah. they definitely could have done more with her out of combat ability and especially because that part of the game is not my favorite Me so you're introduced to her out of combat ability by doing a really annoying quest yeah i did like that her name is sushi and yes. she babysits yoshi yeah i yeah. do like she's that. a fish yeah, yeah. So. i i actually really appreciate sushi's combat more um, in this playthrough, like I went once use her a lot. Yeah, moves like tidal wave, squirt, and her belly flop moves. She can hit flying enemies. Yeah. And she has an ability, if you really want to use it, that can increase Mario's defense for a few times. I think it's one of the only useful don't do damage yeah. moves is yeah. having Mario's defense be high because yeah. party members don't have HP. Yeah, but dare he does. I say, I think Sushi is a top three party member. She's it's a very top good. three party member that's just not very appealing. Yeah, right? yeah, I agree. You know, but I like her a lot. Kind of the Magikarp uh, effect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, any, any notable, uh, non-story related characters? Oh, the cook. The oh, cook. Like yep. the cook. Then yeah. again, yep. there's another balancing issue. I've said, I don't know. I feel like I'm really getting into the math this in this game one. is for eight year olds. No, no, no. <laughs> Wacka's bumps are too good. Oh, Wacka's bumps. Yeah. We're like yeah. a Wacka's bump, which is this little. N- I did some Wacka's bumps in the parking lot earlier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this little <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, like this little mole named Wacka, you smack him and then you get <laughs> you a little, smack a wacka? yeah, you get a little item that heals 25 and 25 You're right? and yeah. most every other item is worse yeah. except for the ultimate stuff you can get. So also another character that you said, side character, Wacka, fuck that guy's awesome. I love uh, Wacka. You know what I liked is um, sometimes you can give stuff to the cook and it comes out and it's like, you got a mistake. That's right. Yes, and it yes, does sorry. like one HP. Yeah. No, I think the great. cook is cool. Taste tea. Yes, tasty. that's her name. Taste tea. They, the have, they all later. have teas, all the toads and yes. teas. Yeah. 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 All that, um, you know what? I, I I forgot about that. That's a really great if point. If cooking was more useful, I would say it, I would like it more, but I, yeah. it does jump out to me as an interesting part of the game. Yeah. yeah. Especially because you upgrade it about halfway through the game by yeah. finding the cookbook, which is kind of cool. I have two notable characters. Yeah. One is a huge pain in the ass. It's the little egg guy. I hate uh, the egg. egg guy. Oh, that guy, the little mini boss. So yeah, annoying. Yeah, yeah, that guy. It was like, get this little pip squeak out of here. <laughs> yeah. He keeps showing up through the game. Yeah. The other one was my favorite character in the game is a guy called Rip Cheeto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like, he fucks he, with your stats. That's right. Yeah. Well, he 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 offers you, he's like, oh, I can uh, I can help you out here. And it's just like, I yeah, I'm going to trust a guy named Rip Cheeto. <laughs> yeah. He's like very shady. <laughs> he's yeah. in the corner. Okay, so I uh, want to get into the story here. Yeah, yeah sure. Let's do it. So what I have is that the story setup is like identical to the last game, except Bowser's the bad guy this time, and the stars have personalities. Is that fair to say? Yes, that's pretty pretty good assessment. So yeah. it's a whole big thing where he takes over Peach's castle, and you got you got to find those stars. You got to find those those seven stars. Yep. And um, And you have to find the seven stars because they have to make a road to Bowser, right? Or something like that. You have to make the star rod. The star, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you you have to get the star rod. You don't make the star rod. You get the thing to repel the power of the star rod. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, when you get all the stars, doesn't he create a road to his castle in the sky, right? Am I wrong? They teleport you there. They teleport you there, right? Yeah, you just get on like 95 and you get up there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you remember in Ocarina of Time? I was about to say that the sages and yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, you know what? The star spirits are pretty similar to the sages in Ocarina yeah, of Time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and the stuff they the, when they invoke Zelda in these games, it's it's usually to its to its uh, not to its detriment. Yeah, I agree. Its, to its benefit. Um. So yeah, it's it's a pretty standard setup. Um. The the first chapter is the Koopa Bros. Uh. Yeah. This like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, yep. squad yeah. here. Um. And this is this is the uh, the Bobom fortress where yep. they're they're like rebelling against them mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, did you guys like this part? Yeah, you know what? I Pretty think good setup. Yeah, can I say one thing about the intro of the game that I think is very effective? Um, you, uh, it, keep in mind, this game came out in two thousand one. We're very young when this came out. I don't recall a time when Mario lost to Bowser ever. Right. So when I'm a kid, I watch this. I'm like, 
wait fuck is that legal can yeah. bowser beat mario yeah and i thought seeing him down and out and just like totally toast on the ground mm. i thought that was a very effective way to start a game leading up into the first chapter mm -hmm. this game was an inspiration for halo infinite yeah <laughs> you get the hero like knocked on his ass yeah. Yeah. Right, right off the bat yeah yeah that was a cool way to start and then it. every yeah. rpg proceeded to copy that where you have to lose Correct. in a battle yes. yeah this might have been the first game i ever played where the first battle was a scripted loss yeah but. I um and it, it really made me think less of Bowser after he uh he was your party member and I was oh, like man right. this fucking guy this back yeah. to his old tricks huh <laughs> yeah um no I, I liked the beginning yeah. uh, a lot um did you guys like the desert chapter not in particular not really you know what I, I like think... how you get there that was pretty cool with the train yeah, yeah. as mm -hmm. far as desert chapters go it's not bad. Um, you know, I have a, I don't, I don't exactly hold intelligent systems, desert chapters in high regard, sure, but geez. I think this one's pretty good. I, I like that there was that little subplot about like the chief of the village is in disguise. Yes. And you um, have to buy the items in a specific order to get the funny. information. Mouse stuff. Staffa, is that his name? Mouse stuff. Yeah. 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 Pretty funny. Um, and uh, you get that that like Indiana Jones part with like the ruins and the uh, mm -hmm. yes. I just thought it was like annoying to traverse the desert. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I think it's just a little bit of like a like a just something Greg doesn't like. Yeah, the desert isn't connected to Toad Town. You kind of get there on a train, yeah. but then the canyon is kind of annoying, and it's annoying to get there. But I like mm -hmm. the temple. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, I do like how in the desert there are a bunch of secret stuff. You can find like an oasis, not the band, like <laughs> with like limes and lemons and different stuff. It's kind of cute. You need to get one, right? I believe For so. For Mustafa, you For, need to get either yes. a lemon, a lemon, I think. Yeah. Oh, intelligent systems putting hidden items in a desert. Wow, they have never done that. Never done that before. <laughs> yeah, it is cool that it's, it's kind of on a grid that's a little hard to parse out. Yeah. And um, the, mm -hmm. some NPCs will give you directions and stuff. Yeah, there's one guy, right? Oh, do you pay him? I forget if it's free or not. And he tells you all the secrets of the desert. Yes. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's, it, I, I didn't hate it. Um, okay. Uh, this, I think this was maybe my favorite part, the, the Forever Forest. Is this the oh, creepy forest? It, it gets into the, like the spooky mansion and stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Chapter three is great. I, I like chapter one a three lot. a lot. It's yep. it's basically like Lost Woods kind of thing. Yes. Yep. Um, did you guys like struggle with getting through this at all? Like no. when you were kids? Well, you had to kind of recognize the visual difference. That could, yes. The thing that makes it good is that I think the first couple are fairly obvious. Yeah. And then as you go on, you really have to pay attention to like yep. the little details mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. I think as a kid, this gave me some difficulty because, well, you know, you're a kid. As I'm, you know, playing this as a 33 year old, it's, yeah. it's not that hard, but I, I like it a lot though for the, it could have been annoying. Yes. It, it, this, this could have been awful to get through, but yeah. it was actually quite enjoyable. The enemies yeah. are, are fairly easy to avoid. Yeah. Some of the I just think, plants are kind of annoying. I just, yeah. the enemies that suck your HP by one take so long. Fuzzies? To hold on, hold on. Riley, didn't you come out recently as a fuzzy supporter? Yes. Yeah. yeah I'll, big I'll, fuzzy I'll, guy. I'll come out on Mike as a fuzzy. I, they're, they're so cute. <laughs> they they kind of remind me if you've seen the movie Spirited Away, there's uh, oh. these little like pieces of soot that look right. kind of like that. But yeah, the, the that action command is pretty annoying. That's a tough you have one. To, like, it's annoying. Get tough them off. Time. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that's when you you run into the Lady Bo in her mansion mm -hmm. here. I like this part. And uh, I kind of like how the you think um, uh, the Boo Mansion is going to be the chapter, but it's, it's not. It's not. They yeah. actually need your help it's with very, something. Yeah. It's very it's very subversive. And yeah. um, you get out into that. Um, there's like that windmill area. Yeah. And what's this guy's name again? Tubba Blubba. Tubba Blubba. This guy, guy rocks. They do a really good job of setting him up. Like you go in there, you're kind of nervous. Oh, this is this invincible he guy chasing ghosts. me. Yeah. 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 I think they did a really good job of setting up Tubba Blubba as this guy's like, okay, how's Mario going to beat this guy? He's, He's invincible. This invincible, like giant dinosaur. Yeah, right. <laughs> Rubber dinosaur. Yeah. 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 And it, it's cool that there's, there's a couple different, um, uh, comparisons I could make here, but mm. I, the one that reminded me the most of was like Davy Jones with the heart. Yeah, he has his heart like in a chest mm -hmm. in, in the with the basement of the windmill. Yeah, yeah that's, so that's to, probably where they got it from. That's where mm. they um that you have to uh, or, or seat the scaleless. Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. Like basically the key to his uh, his weakness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I like this part quite a lot where you have to hide from it. I kind of liked in the Boo Mansion too, you have to solve some puzzles, like yeah. playing a record player to get a Boo distracted and that kind of stuff. Yeah. They make you do some puzzle solving. You know, I didn't think about it until we talked about it just now. 
Chapter three might be the best chapter in the game. It's up there. It's definitely up there. It's very enjoyable. I, I, I kind of have a, a, an affinity for um for like spooky chapters. Sure. If it's a, a spooky chapter of a bigger game, yeah. I usually like that. Yeah. I'd say that this might be my favorite. It's really um, good. I liked the next one quite a lot as well, though. Um, the Shy Guys Here. toy box. I think this chapter is annoying, but the setup is very unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where I what, do you know what my favorite part about this is when you have to you get a toy train and put it in the toy box. Yeah. Cool. But if you try to use it when you're in the toy box, the toad's like, dude, this is a toy. What do you want me to do with this? <laughs> what do you but I'm like, what the this? fuck? What are you talking yeah. about? It's a toy box. You have to throw it in the toy <laughs> box in real life. So when you go in the toy box, it's big. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So, but what happens here is that shy guys invade the town mm -hmm. and they steal everybody's shit. Yeah. And you have to tra chase them down, like so you can use those utilities again. Like the yes. cook, uh, she loses her frying pan. Yep, they steal a calculator. The badge salesman shop. loses his uh, calculator. Yes. I yep. think. So they you, basically, it's like you have to chase them down, but there's some that that are missing, and you the uh, the abandoned house is where they're high. They yes. are high because the the neighbors say. This that house is abandoned, but I hear people coming in and, and out. And you have of to there. hide with uh with Boo. With Lady Boo. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh to, and you watch a shy guy go through the secret secret passage and they're all in that toy box. It's a cool setup. I just think the level's kind of annoying. Yeah, this is the part I, of the game where about halfway through chapter four is where this game starts to lose me a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's a problem with all of the Paper Mario games. There's a lot of backtracking. Yeah. Um, and this chapter, you really start to hit home with the backtracking. Sure. Gotta, this The way that I think there's some levels in this game that are really well designed and some that are just a very way too linear yeah um and this is one of them where you're just basically going around the train track yeah. yes going left room and right room and it's just like i there's a version of this level that works but this wasn't it I you know what i mean kind of like spooky forest like spooky forest could have been annoying but they built it right so it wasn't right there is like you just said there is a version of the toy box that's not as annoying where you put the train track together and it connects all the other old areas and yeah. stuff kind of like the um the factory in donkey kong 64 oh, sure where you open up the, the shortcuts and stuff yeah mm -hmm. um yeah very cool aesthetic anyway um i also think this boss is quite forgettable yeah i, I like the, the shy boss. guy commander oh really, oh, really? general guy the north korean guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> That, that's what it reminded me of. Oh my God. I like this boss a lot. Oh really? Um, oh. Just just his personality, very silly. I because I don't really know because shy guys were originally in Super Mario Bros. Two, mm -hmm. which was a reskinned other game. Okay, right. Ah. So it was the shy guys were not originally part of the Mario canon, and then they became. And I, they're a interesting. very interesting character design that I don't. I didn't really like know their deal yeah. until this game. It's like this is what they do. Kind of an interesting. I like shy guys actually. Big fan of shy guys. Just not a big fan of their toy box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um. So this next bit is the island. Mm. Uh, my, is this my least favorite? It's not least, but it's probably we're starting to like uh, take a little downturn. It's here. losing me a little bit. I think the first half of this chapter is quite bad. Yeah. When you find sushi, you have to find all the Yoshis. It's annoying. Not my favorite. I think the volcano is pretty good. Yeah. But I think everything leading up to that is, is, is kind I feel, of teetering on bad. I feel like I like this area, but there, there's way too many enemy encounters. Yes. That's it's annoying. Like, just let me play the fucking game. You this is I mean? where my critique earlier about low level encounters really being a drag. Yeah. I think this is where it really hit its peak for me. Mm -hmm. When you're walking around trying to find these Yoshis and these guys who are not giving you any experience keep attacking you. Yeah. It's annoying. Yeah. And I'm like, I need, I just want to get out of here. You feel like you're kind of spinning their, your wheels. I just yeah. Interesting you get there but via the whale. That was kind cool. of kind of similar to Majora's Mask. Yeah, the turtle. A giant turtle. I'm a big fan of how you get there. Just not a big fan of doing things on the island. As aesthetically, it's cool. And you know, Greg yeah. doesn't like it because it's like you're not walking there. So it's Listen, fine. how are you gonna walk to an island from Toad Town? You're not. Okay. <laughs> you can uh you can A B these things until you're blue in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh <laughs> No, I, and the, you get the Resident Evil Five part with the, you going to the volcano. This part's mm -hmm. all right. It's uh, I, I like the boss. Yeah, kind of sure. Cool. Yeah. So actually, okay, can I say a weird thing yeah. about this boss? Okay, this is going to be a very strange thing to say about a game for eight year olds. Yeah. I feel like this boss is kind of a skill check. Yeah, a little because bit, yeah. the second phase, you cannot hit it with normal attacks. Yeah, you can't jump on it because it's on fire. You can't hit it with your hammer because he's too high in the air. You have to maybe. You have to find a badge, like the cold badge. You have to have hammer throw, or you have to have enough FP to let your party members do it, or have some items or something. You This boss really shows you, hey, 
this game is about to get a little bit more serious. Yeah. You need to come prepared to these fights. You can't just jump through. Things. I also think they do a little bit of what I would call like corny preparation yeah. in this boss where you got the fish. The fish can hit through yes. fire. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's a fire protection badge and you just got it. Yeah. Like it. Eh. And conveniently, there are two upgrade blocks. You could get the f the group tidal wave attack if you want yeah 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 yeah, yeah. jeez louise yeah. um yeah i i will levy one critique is that yeah. i didn't know if i was making progress with this mm. one because it has the two uh, oh the two additional heads. heads yeah and it's like you you shoot water at them and they they wither but yeah. they can come back yeah and it's like yeah I, it's one of those like um Dark Souls 3 situations where mm. it's like, how many health bars does yeah, this boss actually have? Right. You know yep, I mean? yep, yep, sure. And uh, I will say, I think this is actually my favorite boss music in the whole game. The really? Lava Piranha. I think this one yeah. might be my favorite. It's, this one kind of rocks. It was you, know, you know where I sit yeah. on this. You know where oh, I, Tubba Blubba. Yeah, you know where I am yeah. on that. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Big I, I, Tubba Blubba enjoyer. Big like Tubba Blubba enjoyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, something else that's, that's interesting about this part is... Um, uh, you run into this guy a couple times, the Colorado, the, the oh, treasure yeah. hunter. Yeah. You see, you run into him in the desert and then he's like very heavily involved here. He's like a crappy Indiana Jones, right? You yeah. actually have to go back to the desert in this chapter if you didn't find the artifact the first time around. Oh, um, yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Because there's an optional item you find within the desert temple and you have to give him that item to progress the That's island That's optional? Quest. I don't think you have, I mean, quote there unquote, is optional. Something you can miss it your first time through. You have to get it to oh, the main sure. okay. story. But. So, and there, because there's something else on the island that he wants to, that yeah. you give him for like a star piece or something. Yes, that's right? true. Yes. Um, no, he's, he, he kind of gets in over his head here. It's his wife funny, is very funny. mad at him. His wife is pissed. Yeah. She should be. She should be. He just goes off on his own without telling her. Terrible. Terrible guy. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the next one I thought was interesting, uh, the setup, not so much the level itself, mm -hmm. but um, the flower fields where you, I thought this was going to be a side quest where you have to talk mm -hmm. to those plant guys to get seeds yeah. yes. to plant in the garden in Toad Town. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just this little girl is like, help me plant flowers. Yeah, yeah you and have it, to do it. It mm -hmm. winds up opening up this whole other level. Yeah, I love the setup. I think the whole chapter sucks, but I love the setup getting to it. This is another one of those things where it is very, very linear. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of just it, backtracking. It's like decept. It's like, how do I put it? It's deceptively linear, where mm -hmm. you think it's open, but there's only one thing you can do at a time. Yeah, and it's very irritating. You have irritating. to give um, the right berries to the right color guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing yeah. clue finders or something. And yeah. if you don't have inventory space, you got to drop Inven something Inven for it. Oh, wait, can I take thir thirty seconds before we go on? Because yeah. I haven't talked about it. Inventory yeah. management in this game is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Where Wait, what's you, your specific critique? You can here? only hold 10 items. Yeah. You can only store 30. And if you have 10 items and also have your Mac and have your bank maxed at 30, you can't fucking drop something unless you get another item to replace it or you sell it. It's so fucking annoying. Yeah. I think they really or wanted you, use you to use it when you don't have to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, there's no drop button. No, this game really wanted you to use the items quite liberally. I yeah. think, so you no know, I do like it though, how you can, how most items are pretty useful throughout the entire game. Like even the fire flower is yeah. useful later on in the game. Yeah. But I like that part of it. Um, any, any items that were completely useless? Uh, the mistakes. Yeah. They still, yeah. I mean, they're, I don't know at least they're item. funny. Yeah. Eh. I think the items you, that you did, mentioned the status effect ones are not. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna mention like the dizzy ones and stuff. Not really. I actually my think status thing. effects dizzy are dials. Yes, that's well, what it I'll was. I'll say this. I we should continue with story. I am gonna say I think status ailments in this game are very effective because of how few turns people get. Yeah. And if you can, I use the term with you, Nick, taking people off the field. Yeah, is, yeah. is very ideal in this yeah. game. It's kind of like what do they call that 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 debt consolidation method, like the snowball method, or whatever, yeah. where it's yeah. like whoever. Whoever w one less less gun pointed at you, really, yeah, sure, is, yeah, yeah, is yeah, the way to do it. Sure, that's fair. Um, so you're not getting damaged, but uh, yeah, it's it's it looks nice. I mm -hmm. just thought it was kind of annoying to play, yeah. especially the it's fucking a, it's fart a, boss. It's a cool oh setup, but the level's very annoying because not yeah. only is every path linear, they're so long. Yeah, yeah. and I think um, this boss, I think many consider to be the hardest boss in the game. Really, Huff and Puff. Because you can get pretty easily overwhelmed. What is it called? Huff and Puff. <laughs> right? It's called... Am I, I going right. crazy? Well, I right. think it's called Huff and Puff. Yeah. So they're making like those those um, fart machines. Because <laughs> you need you need sunlight for the plants to grow. Yep. So they're, they're clouding up the atmosphere. And uh, you have to break apart the machines with this hammer. Yeah. Right, right, right. And this guy is 
is responsible. Yes. This is this is the the mashing here like like broke my balls. It was like <laughs> Yeah, it's annoying. It was unforgivable. I do kind of like the gimmick where the more times you hit him, the more times he splits off and you yeah. have to like take out multiple ones at a time or yeah. else you're going to get overwhelmed, but yeah. I don't know. I think the whole level is just not very good. The boss I think is okay, yeah. but the whole level as as a whole, no, it's not great. This is where like that badge double dip helps you if you want to just pound multiple enemies with six upon yeah. six upon six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Anyway, agreed. Um. Okay. Uh. uh Shiver City is the next. Part. I like, I like the Mirror Temple. Like, is that uh, what it's called? Shiver. What is it called? Shiver, Ice Castle. Shiver City. Um, I mean, there's a couple me. different parts. Yeah. Excuse me. We can't go to the temple yet. We got to talk about the world's best detective mini game. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, I mean, oh, I'm, I'm being sorry. A little, yeah, like Penguin City. I'm a little yeah. sarc. I'm being a little sarcastic yeah. here. I think a lot of people hate this, the detective part, but I think it's kind of cute. No, it is I cute. thought it was a good like contrast. Yeah, thing. I think it's the, kind the, of adorable. The mayor's murder. Yeah, mm-hmm. Qu- uh, air, air quotes, quotes murder. murder. Yeah. yeah, he just comes back. It's pretty yeah, yeah. yeah. Funny. <laughs> just, hey, what's just, the author's name? Oh shoot, something way. Yeah, is it Her- Herringway? Herringway. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Pretty funny. Yeah. Um, I think it's cute. You got to do some errands for snowmen here. Yep. Um, and uh, it's, I, I don't know. I, I like this one. Yeah. It's kind of like, like it. one last little adventure before the end. It's a little yeah. soft landing. For me, I think where I don't really like four, five, and six, this being chapter seven, I, I actually like it quite a bit. And uh, this is actually the boss in my recent playthrough that I struggled with the most. This yeah. is another one where I just kept healing. Oh, like, oh, even oh. that. I was thinking if you don't nail your action commands, you're spending half the turn, half the fight frozen. Yeah, True. if you and I, I don't know why I couldn't quite nail the action command for the frost breath. It was okay. also kind yeah. of like I, at this point, I'm kind of like running on fumes. Sure. Like, all right, mm-hmm. like let's. I know I, I've I've conquered every boss up to this point. Yeah. Let's just like let's get this guy. Over Let, let's yeah. get up to let's knock on Bowser's door and you know get and this get, going. Get this going. Underrated yeah. track too. This boss song, I think it's very good. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, we we didn't we didn't mention um the little guy that's been helping Peach this whole time. Oh, you want oh. Uh, Riley, you want to say this thing this thing's name? <laughs> His name is Twink. Oh, yeah. Poor little guy. <laughs> poor little guy. <laughs> if they ever did remake this game, they're going to call him Twinkle, right? Yeah, they're Absolutely. Def- they definitely they got to change his name. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually like him a lot. Da-da-dee-dee, I would have named him dee 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 dee. Yeah. I like Okay, this is a weird statement. Please don't take this out of context. I like Twink. I think he's I think he's nice. He's He's cute. I like him. He has a cool moment as long as you you didn't make it plural, so it's okay. Um I, yeah, it, it's it's kind of funny. He he carries stuff to uh, or carries messages to Mario from yeah. Peach, and uh, and he's got a big balls moment towards the way into. The I was, game. was going to yeah, bring up because he really gets blown the fuck out here. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> poor, poor guy tries to tries to make a stand. And, yeah, uh, it doesn't doesn't work out. No, but no, as as usual, you're you're getting into Bowser's castle here at the end. What do you guys think of this part? I think it's impressive to me how lengthy it is. It mm-hmm. feels like Ganon's castle. Yeah. yeah. I think Bowser's castle is really cool. You have to go to those like Bowser doors yes. and either solve the puzzle or fight a really hard boss, uh, like hard, you know, for yeah. Paper Mario terms, uh, enemy fight. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoy Bowser's castle a lot. A lot of good experience, a lot of good battles, pretty good puzzles too. If you can figure it out, it's great. Yeah. There like were it. no annoying, like remember in the last one with those weird passages where you had to yes. do four out of six of them. This is how you do that. a puzzle yeah. Yeah. in a Paper Mario game. I really like after Bowser's castle too, when you get into Peach's castle. Yeah. yeah. There's no music. It's really just sound effects. It's quiet. It's, it's like, Ooh, I'm getting a little nervous. We're getting here. serious. It's like Bowser's the strongest that you've seen him ever. It's pretty cool. I'll say this. We always critique games where the end doesn't feel like the end. This does. Yeah. This, yes. You know, this feels I'm like the, end the end final the confrontation with Bowser. He smoked my ass last time yeah. I tried. Now let's but see now I've got 50 him. HP and not 10. Bring That's it on. Now I have 50 Five. HP in this shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I like that. That Peach has like a little moment here too, where mm-hmm. you fight the, uh, the, the witch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you you wind up fighting Bowser on a Super Smash Bros. stage. Yep. <laughs> oh my God! It is kind of. I didn't even look like that. that. It yeah. does. Battle it field. does. Yeah, I really um, love Twink's battle here. Yeah, honestly, a little bit of redemption. Yeah, I think um, it's great. No, I, I enjoyed. I guess the, the way it wrapped up, or it's mm-hmm. you know, it's there's no real surprises at this point with with the story. Uh, what was a Bowser's ass. story? It's yeah. end of story. Um, you want to get into uh, the conclusion here? Sure. Of this, of this episode, let's do it. Um, so let me ask you this. So what does this game get right that the others don't? 
Okay, the others as in the previous entry? Uh, Super Mario RPG and... Well, other well, Paper Mario games? The other Paper Mario games in general. What yeah. they get right is the puzzle solving outside of combat and the Metroidvania. Your yeah. buddies are cool. Your buddies help you outside of combat. Mm -hmm. In Super Mario RPG, there's nothing. Like, um, right. I really like the environmental puzzle solving. I think it's really great. I also really like how most of the world is interconnected because mm -hmm. that's my thing. Mm -hmm. And I do like how it's built. Not all connected, but most of it is. It's That's well what connected I'd like. enough where it feels like it. Like taking a boat somewhere is fine. It's not like you're getting into a warp pipe or anything. We didn't mention the sewers either. I think the sewers are a great part. They're cool. Yeah. And I think that's a, I don't know. I think um, it did that part well with the shortcuts. And it also, it made the world connected, but also lets you do a different way to get everywhere else in the world a little bit quicker. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll say this too. Like um, what I also really, we didn't even talk about it. Your your hammer and boots get upgraded over the course of the game. Oh yeah, you're so right. So there's enough drip drip and there's enough going on. You awesome. know, it's yeah. kind of like, um, what's that Silent Hill game where that you meet that guy who opens up like the subway passages. Oh, downpour. Yeah. Oh. It's yeah. kind of like that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Where it's the, the, the sewers like extend. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I, I do agree with that. And I will say, I think um, your companions were my favorite in this mm -hmm. game. They call them buddies or companions. I think they're technically partners. 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 Yeah. I yeah. think it, this was the best uh, uh, assortment of of, uh, of the series, um, of the three games that we're, we're discussing. Uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of old uh, enemies turned into yeah. friends, and I, yeah. I kind of wish it was more like um, a Mass Effect situation where you got two of them to bring around with you in the field, and they would interact with each other. Yeah, I think that would have given talk. them a little bit more. Yeah. yeah, you do get a little bit of it. Like if you have Cooper out and you talk to Colorado, they'll they might have a conversation. They only or interact on with it. with NPCs who are very relevant to them. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of in in discussion you yeah, don't get yeah, the yeah. sense that you're traveling with a group of people yeah. right yeah in combat the the partner system in combat not quite there yet mm -hmm. it's improved later on in other games but i game. think uh, sorry other game <laughs> i'm sorry but the with the overworld and the assortment of party members you get it's really tough to beat i like all of them to a varying degree yeah yeah it's it's tough too because it's except it's, lack of luster yeah it's, it's like in in story context, like why is no, why is only one person jumping in here? <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah, if you're yeah. all traveling together. Right? Welcome yeah. to um, RPGs, turn-based RPG RPGs, logic. where you have eight people, but only four can go at once. Dudes it's in the just, line. Yeah, That's it's just it. how it is. <laughs> yeah. All right, we want to get into final thoughts and grades here. Sure. Would you like me to start? Yeah, is that sure. fine? Yeah. So, um, so I'm, I've used this quote on season five many times. I'm going high, yep. but how high are we going? Mm -hmm. uh, for me. I think this is an improvement on Super Mario RPG in mm -hmm. every way. Yep. Uh, I We've discussed the math enough. We've talked about the pluses and minuses. I love the partners. I love the um, puzzle solving outside of combat. Love the Metroidvania outside of combat. I love how the world is built. I think it's the best looking N64 game, and it's probably a top five game on the console. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be. Um, I also really like... Um, I don't know. I, I, I really like how... Um, Mario with numbers works, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's very enjoyable. Sure, the story's exactly the same as Super Mario RPG. There isn't a lot going on here. Um, but I enjoy... I find this game to be one of the most enjoyable games of that era. And I think mm -hmm. it's very unique looking. And um, I'm going high. So yeah. for me, I'm going A-, minus, A and then I'm going to kick it to Nick. Sure. Um, I like this game a lot. You know, I replay. it's been a while since I've played it. Um, you know, played the first time when we were eight, nine, ten, whatever. And then I played it again when I was 33. I enjoyed really most, if not all, of this game. Um, the beginning drags a little bit when you're, you know, haven't gotten the action commands yet. And I'm not the biggest fan of the four chapters four, five, and six. But all the other parts in the game are so good. It really kind of I don't know, it makes me not think of those bad things that often. Um I love all the party members, and I think the sound design is quite good, too. Um, this game, unlike some games I've played, replayed for this season, was an incredibly enjoy like a great experience to go mm -hmm. back to it. I really loved all, aside from the aforementioned parts, every single second of this game. Great. I do think this game is good, but there are enough things annoy me where I can't go A-, mm -hmm. I'm but I do like it more than Super Mario RPG. I am going B+. Okay. Riley. Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I had never played this game before. Um, Wait, we didn't even mention that. This yeah. was your first run. Yes. Um, so I, I played it via games preservation. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure how much uh, of my of my enjoyment was affected by that, if any. Um, so it's it's you know approaching this as a as a ripe old 32 year old. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think this game is a B for me, and I will explain why. I think. I think it's a better game than Super Mario RPG, but I enjoyed it about as much. I think there are a lot of elements that uh, a remaster could help. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I like I mentioned, uh, we, we've we've discussed the math to death, and I, I think the math is really important for a game like this. And uh, when it's when it's affecting how much I am physically controlling the game, um, I think that's that that hamstrings my enjoyment a little bit. And I think the same can be said for um, the platforming stuff, which is is just annoying. Like if you like, it's an RPG. Like don't mm-hmm. don't punish me for missing a jump. Sure, you know. And it's it's certain things like that where it's just the interface was not smooth for me. Um, I thought all of the the design related stuff was delightful. Um, I thought the quest could be better. I I just think. Um, it's it's a very pleasant game with some room for improvement is my mm-hmm. final thought. Um are we wrapped on Paper Mario? Is that it? We're wrapped. All right. Uh so um that is it for us on Goddamn GameCube and uh we will see you next time for the Thousand Year Door. Thank you guys and uh we'll see you next time.